we're going to go ahead and call the meeting of the Bloomington City Council to order. If everyone will please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Thank you. Councilmember Mathie? Here. Councilmember Bolin? Here. Councilmember Milambwe? Here. Councilmember Emeg? Present. Councilmember Painter? Here. Councilmember Carrillo? Here. Councilmember Black? Here. Councilmember Crable? Here. Councilmember Bray? Here. Mayor Renner? Here. Thank you very much. We're actually going to start with our proclamations. And we have a really important one this evening, uh, marking a really critical time in our nation and our community's history, and this is the 100th anniversary of the League of Women Voters. And I do see former councilwoman and current uh, regional planning member, uh, Diana Helm, in the audience. Diana, would you please come forward? There's got, however many more that you want to have come forward, Becky Hines, others, please come forward. And you can sit over there, stand over there if you want. Uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and give you this, too. So, Diana, since I'm, I'm to give you this, you can come forward here. But you're welcome to say a few words afterwards if you'd like. And this is a fairly long proclamation. Uh, oh, Diana, you know the routine. <laughs> um, <laughs> a, a, that are members as well. Yes, no, I understand. This is uh, celebrating the 100th anniversary of the League of Women Voters in the city of Bloomington. And by the way, let's see, how long ago was it that the 19th Amendment then was passed and took effect that allowed or permitted? August 21st. And, and 1920 was the first time that women had the right to vote in the United States. And we have this, this is as of February 14th, note the date, uh, 2020. Whereas on February 14, 1920, the League of Women Voters was formed at the Congress Hotel in Chicago, Illinois. People may not remember that. If you kind of look around, you note that because they've got several notations in the Congress Hotel. Whereas the League was formed six months prior to, but in anticipation of, the ratification of the 19th Amendment giving women the right to vote in the United States. Whereas the League was a political experiment designed to help 20 million women carry out their new responsibilities as voters by educating them about issues. Whereas from the beginning, the League determined that it would be nonpartisan, neither supporting nor opposing any political party or individual candidates. Whereas the League continues today as a nonpartisan political organization that encourages informed and active participation in government work, excuse me, government, works to increase understanding of major public policy issues and influences public policy through education and advocacy, whereas today the League is composed of members in over 700 local county and state leagues in all its 50 states plus the District of Columbia, the Virgin Islands, and Hong Kong, whereas among these, excuse me, those state leagues is the League of Women Voters of Illinois that was incorporated on March 22nd, 1920. We didn't waste much time. And in turn composed of over 40 leagues with almost 4,000 members. Whereas among these local leagues in Illinois is the McLean County League of Women Voters that was incorporated in 1933, should have done it a little earlier, and in turn composed of over 160 members. Whereas members of the league first, league first study and then take action on a broad range of issues after reaching consensus on positions, and we've definitely seen that here locally in oh, the League of Debt of Gratitude, Whereas leagues at all levels, among other activities, register voters, educate voters by holding candidate 
forums and publishing voter guides, publish public policy research and hold meetings on key issues, whereas the League is a civic organization that has fought since 1920 to improve government and engage everyone in the decisions that impact their future, whereas the League will celebrate its 100th anniversary on February 14, 2020. Now, therefore, the City of Bloomington declares February 14, 2020 as a date to celebrate the League of Women Voters and its vision of a democracy where every person has the, the desire, the right, the knowledge, and the confidence to participate. Thank you very much. Diana, would you please accept this? Do you want to say a few words? I just thank you for um, this proclamation. It certainly means a lot to the League. We have a lot of celebrating to do this year um, because we are both 100 years as a League of Women Voters and 100 years of the ratification of the 19th Amendment. So we hope that you will join us. Um, everybody is invited to join us as a member um, and attend our events. So be watching because we'll have a number of events coming up this year. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. And congratulations again. Next, we have public comment, and as, as usual, I just want to remind people that if you want specific answers to questions or if you want to engage in conversation, uh, please come to my mayor's open house, which is kind of like a mini town hall meeting, on Fridays from 4.30 to 5.30 before regular council meetings. Our policy is not to respond to people, regardless of what they might say, in public comment, uh, and P each individual has up to three minutes to speak. And we have three people, and the three, and I'm going to read them in order, and if they'll come forward, Scott Steinle, Serena Fish, and Nancy um, Marciniak. Thank you. Once again, I am a uh, great debt to my distinguished colleague, Alderwoman Painter, for correcting me. Nancy, uh, I see you, but uh, I have pronounced and mispronounced your name several times. But we're going to start with Scott Steinle. So we're going to do Scott, Serena, and then Nancy. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I, I know that uh, Jim gets tired of hearing me say this. I wish that the city would uh, keep up with the roads, the sidewalks. They are at, they're getting worse every day. Some are better, better. But it's amazing to me that they are great around City Hall, but you get out in the real world and some of them are cracked. I bet they're, you know, I don't know. The city needs to take care of their infrastructure and not worry about everything else. You know, it's prioritizing. You know, what's more important? Uh, the streets are raising taxes to pay for the roads. Because, Terry, people are leaving the city of Bloomington. And, may, you know, if they, if they, everybody, a lot of people leave the city of Bloomington, we're not going to need as many wards. We're not going to need as many council people. We're not going to ne maybe need a lot of other employees that are, with the city, because if the uh, population goes down, we're sure not going to need that, are we? But I bet you'll find money ways to spend that tax revenue. Uh, the the other thing is, you know, we tax we cannot tax enough. For example, a person used to be able to buy a car, period, and the Mercedes paid exactly the same tax rate as the Ford Focus. That, that isn't true anymore. Why didn't you do that before, Terry? And, you know, this is the city of Bloomington. This is not Illinois Westland. I know that I bought, brought that up time and time again, and that may be a real shocker to you, but Westland is a private university. This is a governmental entity. And, um, you know, I, I really um, think that the city needs to start uh, looking at really the places that they can trim fat and put it into things that will benefit the public and not things that will benefit a select few in this city. And I think you know who I'm talking about. Thank you. Thank you very much. We uh, move next to Serena Fish and then to Nancy.
Good evening. I'm back in a positive mode again. Um, Friday night, Saturday, I would like to give highest praise possible to the decision to move downtown business into the city under Melissa Hahn and the two ladies that work for her, uh, Catherine and um, Samantha. Unbelievable weekend from what was going on at the Coliseum, which was a cheerleading cost, uh, contest. We had people parked everywhere, even in the warehouse district. Next then was first Friday, the Tour de Chocolat. Driving down Main Street, trying to find a place to park, it was what we would all hope to see. Lots of people out, all the lights on, laughter, things going on, and it was like so nice to see some things that have come to fruition for the business owners, the task force, but especially the person that decided that Miss Melissa Hahn was going to be in charge of this, okay, and Miss Melissa. Great choice, great idea. It was like our best ever, and the one before it, the small Saturday, small shop local, small business Saturday, unbelievable. So thank you for investing in the people and in our businesses and into the city. Great. I have 54 seconds. Started early voting this week. I'm an election judge. Come and see us. Doesn't make any difference who you're voting for. You need to vote. It's important. Thank you. I won't, don't respond to people, but I just wanted, because uh, he doesn't always get a lot of credit, the person to which our previous commentator was referring is our city manager, Tim Gleason, who hired Melissa Hahn, who's in the back. Thank you both. Uh, we don't always get praise. We move right along, and we move to Nancy Marciniak. Uh, I'm Nancy Marciniak. Uh, first, thanks to all who facilitated the update session with our state legislators, and congratulations to our state on the passage of an infrastructure bill. So this is mo not too many municipal comments tonight. I think there must have been considerable bipartisan and bicameral finessing to get a bill past the block and tackle and across the line. And that's the lonely an analogy I'll bore you with. Um, I suspect we can also credit some executive timing of the play, since spending too much too soon is probably just as harmful as investing too little too late. I want to make three points. One, if all the good jobs are created in too few sectors, you end up with too many people in those sectors and good people still get left out. It's a strain on the balance and stability of the economy, and it's not conducive to good work or ethical practices. That's one reason why we need diversity in our economy and a strong business climate to help create decent jobs across a broader spectrum. And of course, that runs into all the issues of a well-prepared workforce. Two. Technology and advancing levels of con uh, education have created a lot of new jobs. But in the normal course of those jobs, everyday people have greater access to sensitive information, and they are entrusted with specialized knowledge of all kinds. This knowledge and access comes with an ethical responsibility. So ethics can't be reserved to an incidental course taught in college. It needs to be built into our entire curriculum, starting in preschool. 
because we all bear an ever-increasing responsibility to the whole society. And that may be something that's already happening. I don't really know what's going on in the schools. Three, we have to continue to narrow the skills gap. But as we do that, people start bumping up against each other. That creates a lot of friction in the economy, not to mention it creates friction, friction between people. And that's one of the places that needs a little judicious greasing. That's the greasing I was talking about. If we sufficiently narrow the skills gap, it seems to me that we might be able to start phasing in a shorter work week eventually, as we did in the first half of the 20th century when high school graduation rates reached a certain threshold. And that seems to me would create more jobs as it alleviates a lot of friction. So you can pass it on to the state if you like. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we're going to move right along to our consent agenda. Consent agenda are usually items that are considered to be comparatively non-controversial unless they need to be specifically pulled out for a specific reason or for uh, perhaps conflict of interest. So we're going to move to our consent agenda. Are there any items that members of the council would like to have removed for separate consideration? Council Member Crayville. Uh, 7D is in dog. 7D, Council Member Crayville. Uh, anyone else? Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda with the exception of item 7D as in dog? So moved. Moved by Council Member Matthews. Is there a second? Second. A uh, couple of seconds. Uh, second by Council Member Carillo. Okay. <laughs> and uh, is there any discussion on this? If not, not if we'll go ahead and vote. Aye or nay? The motion carries. Uh, nine to zero. There are no nays to announce, Madam Clerk. I'm going to turn this over to Council Member Ka uh, not Carillo, uh, Crable, uh, because you had some questions on or uh, issues with item 7D. Uh, thank, thank you, Mayor. Uh, the uh, 7D is uh, <coughs> the uh, design plans and approval of a uh, car wash um, at the intersection of Oakland and uh, Veterans Parkway. I've had some constituents um, talk to me about the issue of the um, entrance and exit onto uh, Oakland uh, uh, Avenue and, and uh, the problems that they've had in the past with, uh, with that when the Hardee's uh, was in operation. Um, looking through everything, um, I know the Planning Commission conducted a public hearing and there was a couple of letters uh, in response to that uh, making that same concern. Uh, because of that, uh, the, um, uh, th there was a pork chop, uh, that's what they call it, entrance and exit, uh, which makes it difficult to turn left into or exit left uh, from Oakland and also move the entrance about 25 feet to the east away from Veterans Parkway. Um, I had an email asking me to pull this from the agenda from a constituent, and so I did that. Um, and uh, I've also talked with the, with the architect and, um, and with Bob Mart, uh, which I appreciate, and it looks like this is in compliance with IDOT regulations and that um, with the median already there on Oakland, um, I think that this design change um, will alleviate a lot of those concerns, uh, and so I'll be voting um, in favor uh, of, of this project, and I appreciate um, the changes made by the Planning Commission in response to my constituents' concern. And I do appreciate my constituents uh, making those concerns uh, because change can be made uh, when those concerns uh, are brought forth. So I will be, uh, I'll move to approve item 7D. Is there a second? Second. Second by uh, Council Member Bray. I just want to say it's not just your constituent. As somebody who drives by that several times and always when I drive to City Hall for my house, uh, and when the Hardee's was open, it, it was often a, a mess, I will put it that. So I think there are definitely some, some issues, and thank you for taking that leadership on that. Okay, if we'll go ahead and vote, please. Thank you. The motion carries 9-0. to zero. There are no nays to announce, Madam Clerk. Okay. We move right along. Uh, we do not have a regular agenda this evening, and so I'm going to go to our city manager's discussion. Mr. Gleason. Thank you, Mayor and Council. 
Uh, in addition to the uh, events that are up on the uh, board, uh, a couple of the public comments uh, were things that I was going to speak about as well. Uh, Melissa Hahn, her team uh, did an excellent job uh, downtown this weekend that also included the uh, IHSA uh, cheerleading event at the arena, uh, but also wanted to uh, speak, uh, number two, about the legislative update uh, that we had on February 1st. Uh, some of the comments that I've received uh, very well attended. It's my understanding also this was the first time that uh, all four of our state representatives, Representative Summer, Representative Brady, uh, Senator Brady, and Senator uh, Bergman uh, were in attendance. Uh, got a lot of positive comments uh, about the comments that were made from council. Uh, one in particular is uh, Alderman Cravel's comment where uh, he threw the word uh, in their modest. I think it resonated with uh, quite a few people that uh, the ask in our capital projects uh, is a very modest ask of the uh, state and um, uh, we can definitely show the uh, return on investment on those state uh, tax dollars. Uh, so I wanted to share that as well. Uh, next week, uh, at the Committee of the Whole, uh, like we did this time last year, uh, only it was uh, Accomplishments uh, 2018 Year in Review. We'll have Accomplishments 2019 a Year in Review. And uh, that 2018 document can still be found on the city's website under Documents, the Administrative section. But it's going to be just an easy walk through, four or five pages uh, tops, where we just uh, review uh, some of the things, and many mayor uh, you talked about in your uh, state of the city address uh, last or a couple of council meetings ago. So that's something that we'll actually formally present at the committee of the whole, and then also take about 10 minutes to uh, have a FY21 budget update. Uh, either the 24th or uh, March 9th, we're looking at uh, I uh, actually presenting to council and the community the proposed FY21 uh, budget. Just can't take uh, enough opportunities to uh, share what the budget looks like uh, with the community. So that's going to occur. Uh, last but not least, uh, Kevin Cothy, come on down, please. Um, this is a very familiar face uh, to many in the community and definitely uh, council and uh, city staff but uh, wanted to uh, formally introduce uh, Kevin, uh, was named the Public Works Director uh, for the city on February 2nd, and he's joined by his wife, Doris. Is it Jonathan or Joshua? Joshua. Okay. Uh, and uh, just wanted to uh, introduce uh, Kevin as the new Public Works Director. Just uh, give him a round of applause. Yeah. Thank you very much. And then, Kevin, before, you know, if you want to say a couple of words, you can, but just a huge opportunity for us. Um, you know, th this man is highly regarded in the community uh, internally and externally. Uh, you know, really, I came in and I ruined his retirement plans, <laughs> you know, by asking him if uh, he'd consider uh, being the public works director. So it's truly a huge opportunity for us, and uh, he's hit the ground running, obviously and going to address, uh, you know, a handful of um, uh, challenges and issues, but more so the opportunities that we have. Kevin, do you want to say anything? Well, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity. It's a great honor to continue to serve the community that I grew up in. This is my hometown. I graduated from BHS, and I look forward to continued service uh, beyond my 32 years here already. This is my sixth role at the city, all in engineering and public works. So, um, Got a vast knowledge and a good working relationship with a lot of people. I look forward to continuing to work with you guys. And you started with a six years old. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I've got, Mayor. Okay. Thank you very much. And I just want to uh, thank, as usual, I really need to go grovel at her feet, Nora, who's not even paying attention. Uh, but uh, to thank Nora and uh, Amy. Overton, because uh, I have messed up her first name a couple of times, uh, and Scott Sprawls for making this past weekend a great success for the Jack and Jill group who were sitting in your uh, respective spaces, including the clerk and city manager slots, and we had fourth and fifth graders 
from throughout uh, our community, both Bloomington and Normal, but most were from Bloomington, who uh, really were thrilled to see their names and lights. Uh, they were thrilled to vote, and they were also thrilled to vote, just to let you know, to approve capital expenditures for O'Neill Pool and a new fire station on the northwest side of Bloomington to reduce 911 times. Uh, and they were unanimous votes. Um, <laughs> just uh, FYI. <laughs> uh, that's really all I have to say other than thank you all and uh, thank you all for your, for your leadership. And I look forward to working with all of us together for this new year. And it will certainly make this year, uh, I think, an even more productive one than last. Thanks. Uh, council members. It's first light up. Boy, I'm so shocked. Council Member Black and then Carillo. Thank you. And I'm sure we'll hear a lot of praise this evening for the first Friday event uh, on, uh, well, Friday. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's well deserved. And, you know, having, um, you know, seen that event evolve over the years, um, you know, I'm very supportive of all, all of the, the work that the staff puts in to make that happen. And I, I'm very supportive of our council um, supporting our staff in doing so. Um, I know that for a long time there was a conversation about how much should the city be involved in these types of things. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's not just the first Friday. I mean, you look at uh, the turkey trot in, um, on Thanksgiving. I mean, we had, what, what, a couple thousand people show up for that? Including you. Including me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Jim Fruin didn't beat me this time, so that, that, was, that was the key. Um, but, uh, you know, you, I, I would venture to guess that there were several thousand people, um, if not uh, 5,000 plus uh, this weekend. Um, I mean, I parked in the fourth story of the Market Street Garage because it was jam-packed. Um, and those are the types of things that, that don't just happen. That happens because of the work that's put in by our team. And um, as we start to think about, you know, what's next for downtown, I know there was a conversation going on from the Panagraph the last few days. Um, I, I'm very supportive of these types of things, and I think it, it adds to the quality of life. Um, and if they weren't popular, you wouldn't see the sheer volume of people downtown. Um, so, so thanks to Melissa and her team. I'm sure you're going to hear other folks talk about that. But I just want to highlight the, the importance of, of the work that they do and the support that you have, at, at least from me up here. Thank you, Councilmember Black. Uh, Councilmember Cadillo, and then uh, Craybill and Baldwin. Uh, Baldwin was ahead of me, but yeah, just wanted to say, you know, echo the same sentiment. Had a great, great time at uh, First Friday, and we even got some of, like, that majestic, like, big, fluffy white snow that made it made me feel like I was in a snow globe and standing in front of the trolley. Just, like, all the little special things, I think, really came together to make it a whole experience. And it speaks to, to me, to the perseverance, because we didn't have necessarily that level of attendance the first year or the second year, uh, but it's about like continuing um, if this is something that we believe improves uh, the quality of life uh, for all of our residents and, and especially um, downtown. So I, yeah, I had a super great time and I'm excited for us to, to do more. Um, and then last thing is uh, I have a community council meeting this Thursday at 6 p.m. at Mount Pisgah. Ward 6 residents are invited to come, but it is open to anybody in the city, so feel free to come out and workshop some issues. Th Thursday at what time again? Thursday at 5.30, or at 6 at Mount Pisgah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Council Member uh, Crabill, and then Council Member uh, Baldwin. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a few <coughs> things. I'll try to be as quick as I can, and then a couple of questions. Um, just wanted to shout out to... Um, one of my constituents, Nancy Marciniak, who, who always comes to the meetings and really appreciate her input. And, and uh, also, I went to two of the three shows at Coalescence Theater um, and at the BCPA and addressed some tough issues with regard to sexual harassment and uh, racial discrimination. Uh, and they were both well attended and just, it's a local theater group and they really put a lot of effort and time, and, and it showed, and it was nice to see some local uh, um, actors uh, in that. Um, and I'll just do a shout out. I know that we just recognized uh, the League of Women Voters, and 100 years ago, the 19th Amendment, but uh, I think we need another amendment, the 34th, the uh, Equal Rights Amendment. So just shout out for that. And a couple of questions uh, is, when I was at the Eaton's uh, Art Gallery um, and, and talking to Pamela, I was the 250th <coughs> visitor, so that's how, how busy it was. Um, but she had mentioned about public art and just kind of the frustration and there not being more public art in, in downtown Bloomington. And then another, and then a non-downtown question, 
what are we doing as a city to be part of kind of the census gathering and making sure people are counted, especially in some of the areas where people are not counted uh, as well. Appreciate the segue. Uh, this is one that uh, we're going to talk uh, publicly about uh, uh, Census 2020. Uh, this truly is a all hands on deck moment. I think you heard it at the special meeting uh, this past Saturday. I'm sorry, uh, on February 1st. Uh, but uh, the lead is uh, at the county, uh, but uh, here internally we're very involved in this. And actually when we speak to our FY21 budget, you know, it's how much money do uh, we put forth in the budget uh, for handbills or other pamphlets or advertising because it, it's very critical. So you are going to see a steady dose of uh, updates where basically we're playing for everyone to be counted. And one of the things uh, I think it opens up officially uh, on April 1st is my understanding. And one thing that the community can do, uh, you know, and, and I think it's critically important is to take advantage of that day one so that you don't have to waste the resources of people calling or knocking on your door so that that can be devoted with uh, other areas uh, that it might be a little bit more of a challenge to uh, get to. So a responsibility that we have, I would say, is on day one, do it ourselves, you know, get counted and uh, take care of that so that we can deploy, uh, again, deploy resources more responsibly. You had another question? Oh, was the public art just um, is that something that you've been considering at all, or one of the issues that is that brought to your attention? Definitely, uh, this is one where when we talk about public art, uh, and we've had this discussion uh, briefly, and have not worked our way to a permanent policy yet. But it's one that we have to protect the city and the exposure and the liability where. Uh, absent a formal policy that we're working on, anybody could call anything uh, art. And uh, we need to uh, take the necessary steps to uh, prevent uh, something that is uh, just overly offensive in you know, any reasonable person's mind, uh, but protre uh, protect us from any uh, potential litigation. So a long answer that that day truly is coming. Councilmember Bolin, and then uh, I believe Councilmember Cadillo had a response. Um, this Sunday, Freedom Baptist Church had their dedication of ribbon cutting. It's located on the corner of Springfield and Fox Creek Road. The lot has been empty for a long time, and um, they finally, they shared their journey with me, which has been going on for 20 years, apparently. So they're finally there. They're very happy. And it's the first church in Ward 2. Now, the next thing we need is a grocery store <laughs> because Ward 2 is a food desert. But that's just an aside. And the other thing about um, the women, League of Women's Voters, um, and having the uh, privilege to vote for women. I'm showing my age now. Back in 1970s, women could not get a credit card without a man signing. They could not get a loan without a man signing. So that was, that was <coughs> just a generation ago. So think about that for a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good point. My mother faced that exact situation. Yeah. Council Member Carillo. Oh, last thing. I'm sorry I forgot to mention this. Uh, but on Saturday, I, uh, as well as some other folks, went to the big reveal of the Market Street Council's uh, plans for the uh, grocery store and the, the renovation of the plaza on Market Street. It uh, was super awesome. Um, so a big shout out to Arthur Haynes and Lori Bell for pulling that together. Um, and it was great. Like we threw down on some food. Um, the house was packed. People were excited to share um, the vision for, uh, you know, for a revitalization of our, of our neighborhood. And um, it was people from all walks of life. But like 
united uh, around a common cause. So it looks like, because I, I get this question often, it looks like they're finally ready to start taking all of y'all's help. So um, I don't have the email address to reach out to, but I think through Facebook you can connect with them. So if you're passionate about uh, ending the food desert and um, working uh, with them to uh, help establish this nonprofit grocery store and to redo the plaza, um, you can now connect with them and they could use your help. Um, last, as we're acknowledging all the, uh, the goodness that has come with uh, women getting the right to vote, also want to remind everybody that this is Black History Month and um, we should use this month as an opportunity to uh, reflect on and show gratitude for the contributions that uh, black people have made to, to this country and to our community uh, in the past and, to, and today. Black Lives Matter. Thank you very much. And just to uh, reiterate that, the, the particular project you're referring to also would be, as Melissa Hahn knows, and others involved in economic development, an important economic development tool, not just for the neighborhood, but for the entire community, and as an entryway into our community if you're coming in from the interstate through Market Street. Uh, so anyway, uh, is, oh, uh, excuse me, Council Member Emig. Hello. Um, so just to, to recap, chocolate is wonderful. So thank you, downtown. That was amazing. Um, remember vote, vote, and vote. Don't forget voting. My mother was um, a member of the League of Women Voters for as long as I can remember, um, so I'm very thankful for what they do. But uh, in the way that counting ourselves early for the census is important, um, that early voting can also really save resources as the get out the vote effort happens across party platforms. Um, I, yes, I attended the West Market Street Council event. I was very impressed with the way that is moving. If you Google that, you'll find it. Um, and I finally want to say the next community in conversation that is sponsored by the McLean County History Museum and others is February 27th. So I have a few more opportunities to remind you all, but it's uh, about equity in education, which is near and dear to my heart. So I just wanted to, to mention that now. Try to get it on your calendar. Thank you. Thank you. At this point, then, is there a uh, motion to adjourn? So moved. Moved by Council Member Carillo. Is there a second? Second. Several seconds. Second by Council Member Painter. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We're adjourned.